how to significantly reduce social anxiety. If you have any kind of social anxiety of any strength, you are not alone. As you'll learn in this video, many, many people, most people have some level, some form, some type of social anxiety, and this stems from a very common childhood experience. In this video, we'll talk about a two-sided model that will help you to slowly and continuously and significantly reduce social anxiety. The first is how to understand how we interpret the world around us. The world around us is really a projection of our own thinking. Now, this doesn't mean that everybody out there is a hallucination and you're the only person in the universe. Well, maybe, but probably not. What this does mean is that because all of the data coming into our senses is far too numerous, far too large for our conscious minds to be able to handle all this data. So we need to come up with a set of filters through which we interpret the data coming to us. And so how do we do that? We take our past experiences that create these filters through which we see the world. Whenever we go into the world, it is far, far too brain intensive. It takes far too many calories. It takes far too much brain power to continuously accurately interpret the world around us. So we need a kind of a shortcut. Evolution has created a lot of thinking shortcuts because thinking is a very, very laborious process from a caloric standpoint. The brain burns more calories per gram than any other body part. So throughout evolution, we've evolved a whole lot of thinking shortcuts to save on brain thinking energy. And this is one of those shortcuts. Whenever you interpret the world, you interpret the world through a bunch of filters that we have. And these filters are constructed using our past experiences. We use our past experiences to kind of try to guess what to expect from the future. So whenever you look out into the world, whenever you look out to the people around you in the world, and you make an assumption assumption about who they are, what they mean, what they represent, those assumptions, that meaning that you give to them is not based on an accurate assessment of what, act, what is actually going on around you. It's based on what has happened in your past. And we all have a very similar childhood experience. And that experience is that we express our desires, we express our interest, and we're told, stop that. We're told no over and over and over again. The human brain is not finished developing until we're at least 20 years old. And so when you're in the ages of zero to five, your brain is in massive, full speed ahead data collection mode. The problem is what they call the terrible twos. If you are a parent and you have a two-year-old that is in data collection mode, that is a very, very hard situation to manage. And so the way you manage that is to tell that child to sit down and shut up. It's been said that between the ages of zero and two, we were all encouraged to get up, walk, and talk. But as soon as we hit two, we were all told by the adults around us to sit down and shut up. And so this is the common experience that we all have. We are children, we express our desires, we're told no. We express our desires, we're told no. We express our desires, we're told no. And this creates a conditioned response. So as an adult, you look out into the world and you take this conditioned response and that informs your filters through which you see the world. So the first step in this model is to just sit somewhere in public and continuously remind yourself that the people you see out there, they don't know anything about you. And also critically, you don't know anything about them. Remind yourself that it's your job to go out there and find out about them and not project your background onto them to remember to not project your negative expectations on them. And these negative expectations, again, are from this conditioned response that we all experience as children. This will take a bit of thinking, but it will be very, very easy to do. Just sit in public, look around at all the people, and remind yourself that you don't know anything about them. If you want to know something about them, it is your job to go out there and find out about them. Be a researcher, be a 
social experimenter. Go on a discovery mission and see what they're all about. And consciously remember to leave your childhood baggage behind as you go out into the future. That's the first half of this model. The second half of this model is to realize that everybody you see out there, everybody in the world, no matter how confident they seem, no matter how together they seem, they all have social anxiety for the exact same reason. They all have childhood experiences where they express their desires and they were told no. They express their desires and they were told no. So they all have their own bubble of projection around them. This is the crux of the two-sided model. To remember consciously that everything you see initially, subconsciously, intuitively, instinctively is a projection of your childhood experiences, your childhood baggage. And to remember to decouple what you see out in front of you in the future from what happened. The second half of this model is to realize and remember that everybody out there is also surrounded by their own bubble of projection of their own baggage. Unless you keep this two-sided model in mind, what tends to happen is you see something you want, you feel that you're lacking in some sense from an instinctive subconscious standpoint, and you feel like they have something that can fulfill what you think you are lacking. But in reality, they are just another person who's scared of other people just like you are. So instead of approaching them as if they have something that you want, and if they give it to you, fantastic, but if they don't give it to you, oh, you're going to die homeless and alone and broke and lonely. Instead, just go over there with a mindset of curiosity to see what they're all about. Now, it might take a while for you to get to the point where you can just walk over and confidently introduce yourself to strangers, but it will help significantly if you can just go somewhere and sit in public and remind yourself of this two-sided model, that everything you see is a projection of your past experiences, and everything that they see is a projection of their past experiences, that you live in a world where unless you consciously change how this works, you will project your thinking onto other people and other people will project their thinking onto you. That whenever you talk to somebody, there's really two people surrounded by these bubbles of projection. And to consciously remember to leave your projected ideas and expectations behind and to help them leave their projected ideas and expectations behind. This will take a little bit of thinking, but it will be a very easy process. Just sit in public and remember this two-sided model and consciously remember to decouple your projection from what you see in reality. Imagine what it will be like when you are able to significantly reduce your social anxiety. Just take a moment right now to imagine what the future will be like when you are completely free from social anxiety. What kinds of things will you be able to do? What kinds of people will you be able to talk to? What kinds of things will you be able to say to them? What kind of relationships will you be able to build with them? How much fun can you have with your new friends, your new romantic partners? How much money will you be able to make once you leave behind all your social anxiety? That's what awaits you on the other side of this simple two-sided model. So go out in public, remember this two-sided model that you are surrounded by your own projection bubble and they're surrounded by their own projection bubble and leave that behind consciously and do some social experimentation just to find out through your experiences, not your expectations expectations what they're all about. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you'd like to learn more about how to reduce social anxiety and communicate much more effectively and persuasively and seductively, check out the links below. Thanks again.